Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at what's new in Adobe Muse CC 2014. That's right, a brand new release, brand new update for this uh, major update for this year. So the first thing you'll notice right off the bat, I don't even have to say anything, is the interface is completely different. It looks darker. It looks great. It looks like InDesign. It looks like Illustrator and Photoshop. That's because the first new thing is that Muse CC has been rewritten from the ground up. Now, typically, a rewrite doesn't happen for years, 10, 20, 15 years maybe, before a company invests in, in rewriting the application from the ground up. But Muse is only two years old, and it was written on a technology called Adobe Air, and we decided to make it a native application. So it's a 64-bit native application on both Mac and Windows. So with that, um, the, the next thing that you'll notice, especially if you have a retina display or high DPI display, is that we support high DPI displays inside and out. So what does that mean? Well, it'll look great on your retina display just for working in the interface, but more importantly, when you go to create your own website, you'll have the ability now in the site properties to specify whether or not you want it to just be a standard site like Muse always did, or a high DPI site. So that means that any graphics that Muse renders, it will render at two times the size for high DPI displays. So that's just automatic. Once you choose this setting for your site, you will have a high DPI site that looks great on all devices. So the next thing you'll notice is because of the new interface, panels. Uh, here, let's go into one of our pages here. Your panels work just like all your other Adobe panels. Finally, I can just tear them off. I can work with them as I always did. Put them around, rearrange them, sort them in any order, pop them out, put them away, tear them off. Yay, we have panel heaven. We have panels the way we want, the way we could not do in previous versions of Muse. So that's another advantage of the rewrite. And the last advantage that I'll show you visually, which by the way, a couple of things. Uh, let's go to our preferences. And in our preferences, we can go in and we can uh, change our color theme. So I have a dark color theme. I can have a lighter color theme. I can get back to the way Muse kind of looked before, but I kind of like the darker UI. Matter of fact, I like it even darker. So you have the ability to go in and choose your um, UI color as well as because of this new interface, we can now work with tiled windows. So what does that mean? So for example, I've got the tabs that I always had where I've got the site view, I've got the home page for the desktop, and I've got the home page for the uh, phone version. Well, as you know, when you're working with multiple layouts, it can kind of be a pain because you can't really see them both at the same time. Maybe I want to kind of compare what I've done on the home page for the desktop versus the home page for the phone and tablet view. Well now, if I go up to my window menu, I have the ability to arrange via tile. And when I tile, that means I can now see multiple pages or multiple things at the same time. So for, for example, I can even uh, make this one a little skinnier. I can go ahead and zoom this one out a little bit. I can go ahead and click on this one, zoom this one out a little bit. And I can now work more effectively between multiple windows. So if I want to take this text in this window, switch over to this window, paste it in, and then move it down, move it in place, I can do it just that easily. So it'll be much easier for those of you who are working on a desktop, tablet, and phone layout. You can have all three up at the same time and easy move images and, and content back and forth between them. Okay, and whenever you're done, whenever you're ready to get back, you can just simply go into your arrange and you can say consolidate all by site. Now, the next one, and this is one as a photographer I'm really excited about. Let's go back to the uh, main site view. Now, if we go to um, this particular page, uh, this particular page for one of the artists, um, Marie uh, Yam Yamamoto, and we see that she's got a slideshow, but it's not like any slideshow we've had in Muse before. In the last update of Muse, which by the way, Muse has been getting regular updates for the last two years. So even though we're working on a brand new version, it's still getting new features um, in addition to being a brand new rewrite. 
So in the previous versions, you could have a slideshow that was on the page and you can have a slideshow that filled the page. Well, now you hit a third option. You get a slideshow that can fill the width of the page. So if we were to preview this in browser, this will render out this as HTML, show it to us in the browser, and we get a slideshow that's the full width of the browser, no matter how skinny or how wide the browser display is. So as the person makes their browser wider, they get a wider slideshow, they make it narrower, they get a narrower slideshow. So very cool to be able to do that now. How do we do it? Let's take a look. Let's create one from scratch real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and just simply add a new page. And on that new page, uh, we'll, well, I'll be the artist for a change, even though I'm not a musician by any means. But let's go ahead and open this up. And now let's go to our widget library, which pops out nicely from the side there. And we'll go to our slideshows. And you can pull out any one you want because they're all the same slideshow with just different options turned on and off. So I'll pull out a blank one. Once I pull out the blank one, uh, let's go ahead and zoom this uh, page out a little bit so we can see it better. There we go. And now that I've got the blank one out, we'll go in and we'll say that, nope, I don't want to have captions. I don't want to have a counter. And by the way, uh, all of the widgets are touch enabled in case you missed that before. Uh, if, you're, if you put this widget on a page that's for a tablet or a phone, people will be able to swipe it with their finger. All right, but now that I've done that, let's go in and let's just simply drill down to the actual um, placeholder for the graphic. And as soon as I touch the sides, they turn red. And here, let's put this panel away and touch the other side. It will turn red. And once that happens, that means that it will expand and contract to be the full width. Now, of course, my navigation buttons are separate. I can put them anywhere I want, on top of the slideshow, bottom of the slideshow, above the slideshow, and I get smart guys to let me know they're aligned. Now, I just need to go ahead and put some content in here. Let's go ahead and uh, add some images. We'll go grab, um, let's see, her name was Mary or Mari Akimoto. Let's see if we've got any in, in here of her. I do, there we go. And we'll grab all of these except uh, number three. That's the one I don't want because it's vertical. All right, so we'll grab those images. It will pull them in. It will automatically scale them for me. And again, it will take advantage of high DPI um, for the site. And now if I were to preview this page in browser, uh, it would again render out the HTML and give me that full width experience. So I love that. I love that being able to have that option for my pages to have a nice full visual experience. And of course, if I put that same slideshow on a phone or tablet layout, it would just be skinnier or narrower. All right, so let's head back. And now let's take a look at another option here while we're on this page. We'll take a look at a couple more things. Let's go back to the widget library. And now let's go to panels. And of course, accordion panels, not new, tab panels aren't new, but here's something that is kind of new, and that is the ability to rotate your um, panel. So for example, if I go to this accordion panel and I move away from it, there we go, we get the little rotation icon, and I can go ahead and rotate that. And you know, you can rotate objects before in Muse, but now these accordions will work in their rotated state. So even if I grab this, content and I say, well, I don't want people to have to read it sideways. Let's go ahead and put the content back the way it should be, 90 degrees. And of course we can size that any way we want. Now that accordion will work and people are gonna pop to that particular panel and read it. And of course we can do the same thing on any of the other panels, just grab the content and rotate the content so that the content is not um, rotated 90 degrees, but the accordion effect is. So um, last but not least, while we're here, let's go to our social widgets. Uh, social widgets have been updated a little bit more to give you more flexibility. And one of my favorite ones is Facebook comments. So let's go ahead and just drag that one on. We can drag over a Facebook comment section. <laughs> and I can of course use my, um, I can use the current page that people can leave comments about or I can put in a specific page that they want and sort by the ranking, choose the color options, so forth and so on. So more social, we're more social with more, more social widget updates. So Facebook like button, Twitter, Twitter follow, tweet. So if I wanted people to tweet about this page, I can put a tweet button in, I can put in whatever default text I want. Of course, they can change it to whatever they want. And of course, I can recommend whatever Twitter handle I want people to follow. In this case, it would be mine. 
All right, so there you go. Uh, more social widgets, uh, just updated social widgets, and of course the rotated accordion panel and 100 100 with 100 with slideshows. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the finished version of this site. Uh, let's pop back over to the browser. And once we're in the browser, we can go to the home page here and here's the finished version and just some cool things that were done. Scroll effects, which of course aren't new, but just kind of cool. And as we scroll down this page, we can see some cool things about it. We get to the uh, footer with some nice rollovers and menu options. Uh, speaking of menus, when we go to the menu, you notice this isn't your standard everyday muse, uh, menu. This one's more customized. And this one has a rollover that's more... Um, a rollover that gives us more detail. We can jump down to the artist and get to the particular artist pages, just like we did before. And uh, we can see more information about the artist. And of course, this is uh, all done using um, Muse. So one of the other things, this was a Vimeo social widget. So this video was actually being served up by Vimeo. And if we go to news, this one's kind of cool. Uh, this is a Tumblr blog. In, insert it as HTML on the news page. So as this Tumblr blog updates, this page will update as well dynamically. And the person obviously viewing this doesn't have to have a Tumblr account or know anything about Tumblr to read the Tumblr blog. So this is embedded HTML on that page. Now, of course, I've saved the best for last. This is all great. This is all just more happiness for Muse users. But one of the biggest requests we've gotten over the years with Muse is I'm the designer, I want to create a site, but I don't want to be bothered with minor updates that my client may want to do or be able to do on their own. So we had a feature, still have it, called in-browser editing. But the problem with in-browser editing is if you want your client to be able to update the site, the site itself had to be hosted with Adobe have to be hosted via your five, one of your five free sites or five included sites with your Creative Cloud account. Now, that restriction goes away. That's right. You get in-browser editing capabilities. You can design the site. You can host it anywhere you want and still allow your clients to be able to update it at no additional cost, no additional things you have to do other than, of course, if you're hosting it somewhere else, you're going to set up FTP to get the site uploaded. Well, then you would just create another FTP user to that site for your client to be able to update it. So here's how it works. Uh, first of all, we made it easy to get to. So you just go to inbrowserediting.adobe.com and put in the domain name of your site. We'll go find it. In other words, wherever it's being hosted, you type that domain name in and we'll figure out where it is. Once we figure out where it is, then we'll display this screen where you put in your FTP username and password. That's it. You don't have to worry about an FTP program, login, or anything else. And once you sign in, we're logging into your site via FTP, or you are, because you created the user. And now at that point, this is the actual web page that I want to update. And as I hover over each item that's updatable, I can do that. So for example, let's say I want to change the text as the client on this page. I can't move things around. I can't screw up your design, but I can get in and quickly do the updates that I need. So if I click edit, uh, it brings up a text box for me to go ahead and put in, you know, Terry White's middle initials missing. Let's do that. And once I click update, I can update I can keep going through the site. I can navigate through the site, do whatever I want. And then once I'm all done, down here in the lower left-hand corner, I can click Publish. In other words, me, the client, I've gone in, I've gone and made all my changes, I click Publish, and then in a moment or two, it will upload the change, and I get a nice success button over there on the right-hand side, meaning that that page is now live with my changes. Now, what about the designer? The client's gone off and done weird things and updated the page and, of course, made corrections and done their thing what happens to the Muse file? Because that was done outside Muse. The next time I launch this site in Muse, I can click Reconcile. And it will reconcile, give me the choice to bring the client's changes into my Muse file or not on a change by change basis. So I can pick and choose. I can say, bring them all in. I trust the client. Or let me look at each change one by one, see which ones they made. Yep, I want that one. Yep, I want that. No, 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 that's a bad change. Don't bring that one in. So forth and so on. 
So you, as the designer, still keep final control over the Muse file, and your, your clients can feel free, they'll be happy, they can go update their sites as often as they want, therefore bringing you more business, saving you time, and of course, um, making your client happy, which will they will spread the word and hopefully bring you more work to do. So with that, that's what's new in Muse, Adobe Muse CC 2014. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.